Well, last week we talked about love is patient. And hopefully your group got to talk about how love is patient and how that plays out in your own life. And so we've been looking at, or we are looking at, Paul's letter to some Jesus followers in the city of Corinth, which was in Greece. And he wrote, Love is Patient. And when I was growing up, we thought that the coolest thing for the weekend was to be able to go to the local video store and to rent a VHS tape. Now, if you've never seen a VHS tape, I looked, I looked all over for one, and I'm sure somebody has one, but it's what we used to use to watch movies. And so we'd go down, I grew up in Douglas, Wyoming, and we'd go down to Rogers Home Entertainment, and we would rent a VHS, and we would watch a movie that just recently came out, and, and that's what we'd do. And here's, here's what I learned. I learned that, uh, and this was before DVDs, by the way. I even remember when DVDs came out, you would have to rent the DVD and the DVD player because you couldn't buy one. And so Rogers Home Entertainment in Douglas was, was absolutely that. And so going back to those days, I remember that we would pick up the VHS tape, we would take it home, we would pop our popcorn, we would sit around, we would watch this movie, and then I absolutely remember that almost on every single VHS tape was this little sticker that said, be kind, rewind. And so the idea was that you would rewind the tape before you returned it so that the next person who rented the tape could start the movie from the beginning and not have to rewind. And so it was kind to rewind the tape so that the next, next customer wouldn't need to do it. It's one example of what kindness looks like today. Well, sort of. Have you ever been in a coffee line at a coffee shop and you order your coffee and you get up to the window to pay to receive your coffee and come to find out the car in front of you actually paid, well not the car, the person in the car paid for your coffee. It was a random act of kindness. It's, it's what we do and it's what's been happening. And, and yet what Paul's writing about is far deeper, it's far more meaningful than just some random act of kindness. This is what Paul says. Paul says, after he says love is patient, he says love is kind. And I'm thinking that he had something else in mind besides just paying for somebody's coffee. And the idea of paying the coffee, you pay it forward, you pay for the person behind you and so forth and etc. But specifically, when we love, we need to check our motivation. When we love, our motivation should not be to make ourselves feel better, to receive recognition or to receive acknowledgement, even appreciation or expect something in return. I think the best way to restate love is kind is to say that love cares for others more than ourselves. Love is kind. It's driven by a deep desire for the well-being of somebody else. It means I go out of my way without thought and without hesitation about what it's, what's in it for me. I'm trying to do this with the other person in the forefront of my mind. Love is kind is about seeing a need and then actively, quickly responding to it. And we're not being kind when we avoid doing unkind things. See, I think that that's what we think kindness is. Well, I could say something, but I'm not going to. Or I could point out this, but, I, but I'm not going to because I'm, I'm going to be kind. That's not the kind of kindness we're talking about. True kindness goes out of its way, usually quiet, without recognition, to engage in a very intentional act of goodness, of kindness. Love is kind is really love in action. It's in motion, it's doing something. Kindness at its, at its most basic level is giving and receiving help. And this means that we're willing to give help and it also means that we're willing to receive help. And this is a challenge. And the reason it's a challenge is because we live in a society that promotes self-sufficiency. We want to be independent, we want to be autonomous, we want to be self-reliant. We don't need anybody to help us with anything. And if you can say that, then it's like you've achieved something, some important status in our society. And in some twisted way, we've viewed asking for help as a weakness or as evidence that we've failed at something. Asking for help or giving help to somebody isn't failure. That leads to our kindness getting stuck in this 
cycle of messy thinking, and that's what happens. What will others think of me if I offer to help them? Or, or what will people think of me if I ask for help? Or, or if I accept it? Or if I try to offer it? What are people going to think about me? Are they going to view me different? Are they? And, and if you notice, the problem with all of these questions is that they're actually self-focused. They're focused on me, which is the primary, the primary killer of love as Paul describes it. The whole idea of love is patient and the whole idea of love is kind, we're gonna talk about four more. But, but the killer, the killer of love is our selfishness. When it comes to love is kind, just start now showing kindness where you are, with the people you do life with, with the places that you work and the places you go to school and the places that you shop, just show kindness. Who are the people in your life right now that you can turn your love into action through kindness? Who, who has a need that you can meet right now? Who are your neighbors you can help right now? See, we live in a world that is eager to give people what they deserve. What they, what they earn. We want to cancel people for their mistakes. I believe there is another way. And I think Paul's trying to get at it. He's saying love, true love, is actually kind. Real love is kind. It means that we react with kindness and goodness rather than harshness. Love is kind. Bob Goff says, if it's not kind, it's not love. It's something else. And so I want you now to go with your groups and, and you've got a study and I want you to help define what kindness looks like. What, what does kindness mean? What, is, what does love in action really look like for you in your life? And we'll see you next week.